this off the Hawaii auction, which is the only actual tu fresh tuna fish auction in the United States, based in Hawaii. Um, getting a head-on fish is very difficult because a lot of these things are trip boats, so they want to head right away and put them in the belly of the boat, save room, get rid of the head. So we specifically asked for a short trip boat, which is less than seven days out in the water. And we kept getting pictures sent to us, tail cut sent to us via photo. And we decided on this gorgeous fish. We've uh, named him Jim, <laughs> AKA Big Tuna. <laughs> so this is a true auction fish from Hawaii. Hmm? There's a reference I got. <laughs> <laughs> Love him. This is for me, right? This may not have been the best spot hmm? to stand. <laughs> yeah, you might get milk. Yeah. Yeah. Beware of tuna splatter. We could have got no splash guard. <laughs> <laughs> or it's a sample. <laughs> Open your mouth. <laughs> so Keen's going to offer up some different applications, um, show you applications to try some of this raw over here. Fun part. Any any goodies in the head? You know, like you oh know, yes, like oh, all yeah. cheeks. You know? Oh, the cheeks, the collar oh, wow. itself. Yeah, oh, it's delicious. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's yeah, they dress it, they bleed it right away. The first pro part of the process, yeah, dressing yeah, this, and bleeding. And this guy has not been frozen. Oh, okay. is, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this has not been frozen. Load in for us. Yeah. It's nice being, having the time gap from, you know, central time to the Pacific. Yeah. So we have that nice, like really a, a different, another five hour window where we can oh, actually operate in. Yeah, yeah. How was it prepped on the boat? It looked like it had been gutted. Just gutted and bled. Yeah. Gutted, gilled, and bled. Then we would use the Yeah, this is a perfect day to be cutting outside. Says the guy with the warm hands. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> hands in the pocket. It was, was 74. Yeah, with the head on. Yeah. So tuna skin is really, really tough. It's really thick with really dense scales. So a predator's got to be real serious when they want him. Yeah. Sharks can lose teeth and grow backs. Well, lucky <laughs> them. Tuna can't get his head back. You know, like this being so fresh, it actually takes a minute from the bloom. So the color right now is kind of docile, so to speak, kind of what you would think a cherry red tuna would look like. Yeah. They actually bloom the oxygen. Like once they oxygen, the nice bloom will come out of it. Like when you buy frozen tuna, specifically tuna that's uh, geared up for like sushi, 
Generally, in most restaurants, it's been frozen at some point. Not all, but a lot have, and they've been CO2'd, so which actually brightens up the color. It's almost, it's almost a false color without dying. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> If you guys don't mind working your way around here, that way can you keep back here with an eye? Well, it's gonna be right here. You don't mind. I want to try some tuna. Yeah. does not make a great stock. Okay. You could use it for like, everything on there is eatable meat. So if you were patient enough to pick around it once you cooked it, you certainly yeah. go for it. Most fatty fish makes up for a rancid stock. This is a yellow fin. This is a yellow fin. Yeah. You can tell by this fin. Yeah, it's more elongated. The big eye would be what, what's kind of short. The quality though, the big eye, well, big eye generally has more fat content, but it's more prone to uh, sashi. Sashi? So, sashi is basically a disease in the fish that causes like spot jelly and spots to Oh, okay. drop. Emily, did you want this? It doesn't make the is fish poisonous or jelly? bad. It's oh, just sure. the eels <laughs> you don't eat. Jelly. Yeah. Fish jelly. Mm -hmm. So yellowfin do not get sashi. We prefer to buy sashi. Oh, or excuse me, yellowfin. Opposed to uh, if you like watch the guy. some show so how people eat like this like this. Okay. So we got this madness. Yeah. Trying to eat your salary. So if this was a larger yeah. fish. <laughs> this is on oh, the belly, true. inside the belly off the bone. The butt roll. This would be the toro piece. You know, generally you need a larger, you know, you guys can tell there's actually a lot of stuff. Also, Torah and I can't choose the perfect. Part of the tuna line, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, like this back piece right here. Easy. Yeah, I see. Ya. That that would be the Torah. Oh. It's on the bottom two loins that are connected to the belly. Should have brought the tuna for Should have brought it. I thought about it. It's in Damon's uh, cube. So what I'm doing is I'm basically just going to cut this. For what? Into all, all three of us can eat Damon if you have tuna toys. Oh. Here's a so like, trim cool the Japanese tuna down puzzle toys. Mm -hmm. So that you can then kind of work with it and make your nice cuts. Because zero If you ever take one of our sushi classes, zero. we will walk you through this. That's the next one. Holding my mouth open, Sean. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Look at that. stuff up. Shake this a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer. Now with all the scrap, basically what you do is when you trim tuna for sushi, you wind up with a lot of extra pieces and stuff. So again, in class, what we go over is we show you how to make poke with that, which is really nice. So we're making sure not to waste any of the tuna. I'm going to use the top 
top, this top part of the tuna here, be the first cut. This part is generally a lot more tender. Works very nice for sashimi. This is not the greatest sashimi knife. Oh, you want it? Oh, yeah. Thank you. If, if, if you're giving out samples, I'm game. No, that's the cheek, or what do you call that? It's the forehead. The forehead. Something like a little forehead to start with. Shot. And uh, Jake Hart. Green food. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. You guys want a close up eye? That's, I mean, that's really beautiful. It's pretty interesting. The back end actually is probably gaffling up. Oh, yeah, pulling out of the water. Yeah, it's good. When do you think you put food on the water? Not too often you get to eat sashimi right off the fish. Or you get a couple of, what are you doing out there? Okay. I, uh, I enjoy your videos. Thank you. They're fun. You like that fun. I was looking at you and you like those. I don't know if you have I get around as they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My voice. You're not just waving a yeah, head in front of a child for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Long in your kitchen. <laughs> you elusive bread tuna. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, if it's sharp enough, anything will work. But the, the duller your knife is, you kind of see like it'll tear the fish. So the sharper, the more cleaner it's going to go through and not tear, not leave you with kind of ragged edges. Oh, yeah. But in the end, it's all tuna, so it really doesn't matter. Good job, and it's not terribly expensive. So, when you're grading tuna, um, you're looking at color and fat content. Most of the United States base their grades on color, um, and that, that basically allows the freshness to be exposed as well. So, color is generally, if you have good color, it's fresh fish or it's the right aged fish out of water. It's actually eating fish directly out. It's not the ideal situation. Actually letting it like age a little bit um, is ideal. Um, but fat content is the I'm other the main the way that we, we really actually kind of miss, I think. Yeah, you know, they're really the bones all go all the way through. Full oh, collective, yeah. so I'm the importance of the fat inside the tuna. The way we eat it. If I eat too them. much of it at once, you know, to really diagnose it. But you can see in this fish, it actually has some lactic acid buildup. You'll notice like the gasoline spill over the, the color of the wine a little bit. It's got like some rainbow color. It's actually lactic acid. It fought, it fought a little too hard coming out of the water. These fish come out of the water 140, 120, 130 degrees body temperature inside. These are just bullets. These are monsters in the water. They go up to 90 knots in the water. One of the fastest, you know, next to like a Mako shark. It's 
right there. Yeah, you gotta bleed him, but the key is getting him out of the water and the body temp backs down, getting it down. Yeah. So when you import a lot of tuna, what you find when you're importing from you know, smaller countries, they really don't have a great system for ice. So it's tough for them to actually get, you know, keep a really high quality grade because they can't get the internal body temperature back down while they're processing. Yeah. It's all about yeah. The tuna wood. is highly migratory. Yeah, so it, it it really moves. You know, temperature, water temp, um, weather in general. You know, how long is it, are they? Is, it, is the weather pushing boats either out longer than they want to be? I mean, it kind of moves throughout the world. I mean, we do a lot with domestic tuna from either Hawaii or like South Atlantic, from out of Florida. We land a lot of tuna. And then we buy a lot from the Philippines as well. That's um, always plenty of fish on there already. What? Open your mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah, if you're right. Oh, with tuna, what's really unique? Get People are tuna. getting. <laughs> Sorry, well, what's the uh, the program in that place? The sushi program. Giro? Yeah, Giro looks at you. seen that? He talks about he ages yeah. his fish. Like he wants his fish a certain age. Because it, it's just like, like in anything else, the, the, the fibers, the protein break down, it just comes more tender. The flavor, the flavor blooms as well. Not in a fishy sense, but just in a, a full, a full flavor profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys want to? Go in line and try one of this. Show you. Just grab a pick and just grab a piece of tuna and get in. The smoke show you is incredibly nice. So, if you'd like to do it, please help yourself. Happy to entertain. Something interesting people are starting to do now, they're starting to dry age tuna ones, like a with a dry age steak. That's the next that's the next level. The HACCP plan for that is incredible, like it's really daunting. But I think Don't start. Yeah, things are gonna start going in that direction. We're gonna see a lot of dry aged fish that's gonna start happening. That you can use it. Oh Did you try the smoke tree? Did you try the first one? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be selling Jim out of the store. <laughs> <laughs> I would have gone with like Tina or something more of it. It's a tuna thing. Oh my gosh. I love it. That's great. Barnes? <laughs> there we are. enough meat over there? I got a whole bunch more. Here you go. <laughs> I ordered that skin off. Hmm? I ordered that skin off. You didn't order it. No, you really didn't. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, they Where's my 40 cent credit? These are all, they're pretty fun. <laughs> 
It's cheap, man. Just the skin. Just the skin. <laughs> I was going to lay it back out. <laughs> Fish, it's usually, I think, around 10 to 12 per year, depending on which species, though. So, I don't know. What's considered large versus this is this is great on it's like for Hawaii. Oh my gosh, they consider a large fish. Not whole, whole. The head is a lot of extra ship weight. <laughs> Just one? No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. The store probably goes through about half a fish a day. Okay. Uh, I work for Orson, the wholesale company that owns that. Oh, okay. And yeah, we're not going to go through the whole thing. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 20 with cleanup. And all your extra. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to change my sorts? Um, I saw it there for a bit. Okay. People are still looking. Very out here, then there's no cooler. You're right, this is reddening up. Yeah, yeah. The lighting's not awesome. That's not You should have a lot of light on it. Yeah, it makes, yeah. Light's tricky. Oh, well, I don't know. You can already see the you can already see the difference between the ones over here and the ones over there. Oh, yeah, it looks pretty heavy. Yeah, oh yeah. You work three times. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Does this ever see an oh, Italian yeah. restaurant drinking cappuccino for anyone? I don't know. Yeah. Do you guys get that a lot? Yeah. Barnes and Barnes fish head jokes? No. Oh, really? No, we really don't. Like what? The jokes we get are fishy. Fish for the halibut. Holy mackerel. Come for the shrimp, stay for the halibut. Oh, that's a full one. I don't like that. I don't like that. We're going to have some pretty aggressive bikes. We're building a new store. This store is going to be across the street. It's like a 4,000 square foot store. Yeah, yeah. Maybe tuna. Do, 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 do. We're looking at the lady right now. Quite a, yeah, good so you want to eat it? Oh. Well, this, this side. Yeah. <laughs> kind of the point of sea fishing, isn't it? I thought so. And taking pictures. Going like this. Or like this. Yeah. The largest fish I ever caught was this. <laughs> well done. Sunnies. All I ever had was sunnies. Hey, can you fish? I got to come on Monday. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. We'll move it inside and you guys can uh, go to the... Uh, <laughs> There's already some in there. Oh, there's there's in there. Yeah. Yeah. Just tell me you want to buy Jim. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the first time. Oh, cool. Yeah, it kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Yeah. This is pretty cool. Thanks for doing this. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 more of the good meat off his head here. Soup, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. We do. We do. Not typically tuna balls. Mm. Do you, like inside, I mean, like. Typically, no, we, we do take orders for that. And uh, they are filled as we oh, like For every, every 40 pounds. Right, that's what I was I was, I'll ask what time of the year it was, because I'm very curious. Because of that. This time of year is pretty bad. Oh, they've... <laughs> yeah, <that's nice. laughs> they've won once. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess it's, 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 it's cool that that's... Yeah, no, this actually, if you call with enough notice, you throw a bat on the grill. I'm sure, yeah, there's a lot of good meat there. There's a lot of good meat there. Literally, you do have to throw some of these out. This guy, too. I'll throw a bat on the grill. Really? Yeah. There should be some in there. And I kind of picked through this already. Right? We do it. Here. We throw the whole head. Right down here. Obviously, I've already pulled the cheeks out. Emily gets the last time. Wait a minute. I want some more cheeks. Some really great meat up here in the forehead. Hey, that's actually a stone. Nope, nope. Okay. <laughs> I had to make a fun little place setting. <laughs> Poking is nice because you can use some of the more sinewy parts. Yeah. You guys have some more? Yeah. 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 Difference between what? Uh, shirashi, uh, poke, and what on top. That I don't know. I couldn't say. Uh, you know, poke, unlike, you know, ceviche, 
and things like that. It's generally considered to be more of a raw preparation because you're not actually letting the citrus cook the fish. You know, so it's just dressed and served. Yeah. Yeah, okay. 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 So like what would you, uh, what will you I mean, do with the rest of the In Hawaii, they make oh, we're about to put all different kinds of things. In fact, oh, you? Okay. Uh, so you can actually get poke oh, using bloodline. Oh, okay. They'll make like a special, like, I can't remember. Like, salmon type of thing where you can just eat it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. It's yummy. Too much good meat out there. Lunch, it looks like. You just put a grill in the and pick the meat up. <laughs> is the cheek or the forehead at, in, on here at all, or is it all gone? No. I think I have a piece of it. Oh, thank you. Just comparing it to the rest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have a smaller eye, so it's just more tender. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Bravo. <laughs> Just my other two. We're not cutting that. Please don't. Huh? I think we're gonna do a we might do a sword cutting next week and oh really it's actually a pumpkin sword oh. so pumpkin sword are unique like they have a very 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 vibrant orange color a true pumpkin almost looks like I'll show you a picture of the fish that I'm interested in Oh, you're stocking one right now? You oh, I'm already, yeah, I'm already, like, sorry to think. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is pretty <laughs> exceptional. <laughs> so look at these loins. See how orange oh, that is? Wow. Yeah. I really haven't seen that. So what's really interesting about a pumpkin swordfish, they get that from eating crustacean, and particularly one species that makes it so vibrant, which is a royal red shrimp. Sure. And what's interesting about royal red is that you can only catch this about 2,000 feet of water. So they're way down. These fish actually go down 2,000 feet, skim off the bottom, and then come up and work all the way through that, that scape. That pressure change is super unique to having a fish that can do that pretty yeah. automatically. So when the Royal Reds run, you can, certain fisheries actually eat on that, swordfish fisheries, and you can kind of pluck and have a good chance that you're going to get pumpkins. So pumpkins are hitting really hard right now. Don't kind of on the Atlantic side of Florida coast. Okay. So we're looking at bringing one in for next weekend. And it, it tastes different. It's not, it doesn't just look different. It's sweeter. It's got a bigger fat content. Sure. I mean, the nutrients in a Royal Red, I don't know if you guys have read Royal Red Shrimp before. They're, it's it's the greatest shrimp on earth. I mean, there's Argentinian Reds you might see out there, which okay. is basically the same species. Okay. The flavor is yeah. outrageous. But I, um, I keep some saltwater aquarium fish, so there's definitely like thoughts of like feeding them to keep certain colors. Oh, right, right. Tail, though. Activities with the same kind of like. I mean, kind of on a really true deep that, level, I, mean, I really want them. What they, but also, what fish eat dominate? I mean, with any food source animal, I mean, what they eat dominates yeah, the flavor profile. Yeah. No, I am. I even like about the red sort of thing. I don't know. I said there was. Yeah, the pumpkins. Oh, not not this. Yeah, yeah, they're going to the Mill City Farm. My uh, parents do some snowboarding, so I'll have to tell them to keep an eye out for pumpkin soda. Oh, yeah, that's true. I guess it's a little hard. I'm just going to do a little right, right. sushi rice <laughs> vinegar. <laughs> that's a seasoned vinegar. We have a little of the sesame chili oil. This is basically what we make in class. A little different, a little simpler. 
typically ship the head, but no. pull the head off the daily every day. So what are we going to do with that? That? What, what were you going to do with that? Well, I'm going to keep picking meat out of it yeah. until <laughs> I am full. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking the head and collars is an awesome dish for it. Oh, and just picking well, yeah. meat off it. Pretty beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys want to go ahead and try that? <laughs> what else? World signing is doing it. Hey, what's up? Can someone say something with the collar? Yeah, what is the collar? So it would be basically to the end of the head. Oh, okay. And it would be that part here. Oh, okay. Um, if you ever are in a store or if you see it at a restaurant, like a hamachi collar, is just that part that's right behind the machine. Awesome face. A little soy, a little acid, a little onion. Up, man? Yeah. Well, oh. and again, this That's is really crazy. the best way to use up all that like, yeah. extra tuna. Cut that? that? Yeah. Nice. So when people ask us Apparently I was on a lot, you, you know, you were on camera. So on how much stream? fish do I need for sushi? Yeah. I always tell to go a little bit over. Just got going because on. then you just, just do whatever. Just let me know. Just like that. Okay. A live. Yeah. Demonstration. It smells good. You never really yeah, know. Well, we just how many, how much your guests are gonna eat. That texture is super different yeah. when it's cooked, and it's super good. Yep. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, you? Good. Yeah. Really nice. I love it. Oh. Okay. Mm, it smells really good. Yeah. Is it yellow Yeah. I'm wondering if it was yeah. Japanese or Chinese. It's close. Yeah. Um, Cool. <laughs> yeah, what are you up to? Just shopping? Yeah, just or? a little bit. Yeah, picking up some stuff. Yeah. I did, yeah. He's getting me an order. <laughs> <laughs> or, well, Someone else is getting me an order, but Nate knows who I am, so I was like, I'll be back. Oh, no, I think I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm just walking out here. Yeah. Yeah. Don't mind me. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. That was a new, uh, uh was a new yeah. We have a different brand. Oh, okay. Same yeah. thing, though? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just find the. Yeah, we're going to use my new group. Yeah, revenue's crazy, right? It's just like... Yeah, if anybody's having a Super Bowl party tomorrow? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. Just chop it up. Yeah. <laughs> could, literally yeah, couldn't be easier. Yeah, I mean, integrating all those people. Are you in... Did you just call me? Yes, because no. there's a lot of things that actually happen instead of things. All the time. <laughs> Are you in back answering phones still, or what are you doing? Um, uh... Director of training and marketing. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It would be a very simple focus. Awesome. Oh, man. Just you know, totally different things than you guys probably remember before, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm doing uh, some ceviche uh, tonight, big. so I was like, I we use them for a lot of fish around here. Do you know where it is? A lot of our salad. Do you know where it is? <laughs> yeah. I gotta run though, I gotta go get my kids. Alright, yeah. Great. See you guys. Good so, the tuna, a little of the whiskey barrel, I'll show you. In terms of different uh, things. A little of this chili oil. It's not just literally unpack the fish, repack the fish, sell the fish. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that. Very, very Is it fun and interesting? No. Very, very bad move. Push me pretty hard. What? Oh, yeah. No problem. Oh, 
doing very well. Right? <laughs> this chili oil is awesome. I use it for so many different things. Who's now though? This is one of the primary ingredients in my spicy tuna. Oh, it's the little bits, sharky bits. It is good. Oh, yeah, because I don't care about the box. Are you sure? Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Awesome. Hey, look for more of these. We're going to try to do more interaction like this on Saturdays. Some yeah. different species and kind of a little educational piece. Sampling. Yeah. Fantastic, hopefully. Inspiring. No, we just have the grill going for a while. Yeah. I want a little bit of a Texas smell. Yeah, just some cedar box in there. We'll post an update on that. Oh, yeah. We'll, yeah. We're, it's that same time. So Monday, we'll know. That goes on. Our, we actually uh, ship that ground right up here from Miami. So Monday, we'll, we'll see if we have it rolling. If it's rolling, then we'll definitely it's rolling. It's rolling. It's rolling. It's rolling. It's rolling. Yeah. <laughs> 